This week on Lights, Camera Vegas. We're all shook up as Elvis hits the big screen and we're talking to the cast from a very special location. Rachel, good on you for going there. That's just awesome. I'm so impressed. Wow, that's very special. This is pretty surreal, actually. Then from the king of rock and roll to the king of culinary competitions. Hey, what's all that noise over there? That's the sound you're going to hear in your nightmares. Iron Chef is back in a big way, and we're sitting down with the stars to get all the delicious details. Plus, it's Ethan Hawke like we've never seen him before. Would you like to see a magic trick? Yeah. What the star tells us about his sinister new role. My whole career, I've tried to make different kinds of movies. And Penn and Teller are trusting him with their theater this summer. See how Michael Carbonaro is making the most of this magical moment. It's no illusion. Lights, Camera Vegas starts right now. Lights Camera Vegas. This week we're on location here in Los Angeles for a very tasty assignment as we're talking to some of the biggest superstar chefs about the return of the coolest ever culinary competition. Uh, let me give you a little hint right here. Let us prepare for the biggest battle this kitchen has ever seen. Ali Cuisine! This is the moment we have all been waiting for. It's been called the toughest ever culinary challenge. Now, Iron Chef is back in a big way with a search for a new Iron Legend. Having Iron Chef return has been such a gift, so thank you so much. You're welcome. I mean, what did you think when they said, we've got this idea to do this, the search for a legend on Netflix? Were you like, about time? Oh my God, the, 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 Curtis has said this many times. When you get that phone call, you're, you're, you're so excited. You're like, what? <laughs> Iron Chef? And the, the answer is yes, absolutely. Uh, and then, and then it set, settles in like, oh my God, you're gonna, you're going to put yourself out there, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, but I can speak for all of us. We're, we're all so competitive. The answer is yes. Battle. Being an Iron Chef, your food really has to speak for itself. We cooking from the heart. For us and for me personally with with this new show that we were both all a fan of the old one which yeah. is the japanese mm -hmm. one and um we we're just very excited that it's 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 game on you know hey what's all that noise over there that's the sound you're gonna hear in your nightmares and i'd love to i mean curtis it's so funny i think people know you like you're always smiling you're so gregarious but you're like i'm here to win Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's what makes us who we are, right? We love right. great food, but we love to push ourselves and push those boundaries. So whether you're competing against yourself, can this menu be better than my last menu? Or whether you're competing against someone else, um, well, you do take it really seriously. And we do work in kitchens that are tough and hard and all the rest of it, but right. it doesn't mean you can't have fun and you can't still be a nice human being. Right. And, um, but yeah, when it's time to kick someone's ass, you got to step up and do that too. Right. The challenging chefs already tied their games, come to prove the themselves against the Iron Chefs. The five new Iron Chefs are ready for battle in Kitchen Stadium, even if the experience is new for some. Congratulations so much. I mean, this Thank whole you. experience, I love that it was all that we loved of Iron Chef, but they wouldn't new modern twists and takes on it that really made it exciting. I mean, when you got that phone call to come do this show, what did you think? I was completely flattered and honored. I've never been on any other cooking competition. Actually, how have you escaped? How have they escaped the grass? I mean, it's, <laughs> you're such a talent. You're so great on TV. Well, thank you. The whole experience was amazing, right? Uh, young rising star chef coming for us, coming yeah. hard for us, which is a lot of fun. And then to go up against each other too. Uh, it, it's just, it's. I feel like, just like you said, there is the icon show here that you know we have the brand that everyone knows about, yeah. but also some new twist. And I think that's, it's gonna be something for everyone. Get your popcorn, get ready, right? There is one more ingredient. Our secret ingredient. Fans will love seeing some familiar faces like Alton Brown. And yes, the chairman is back. I, I was emotional because we've been doing it for so long, way back when, you know, and I get to see my old friend and I'm old. And <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Alton, you look good, honey, you age well. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, yeah. you're like 
And then we get this young buck coming in here. And these two, I think, are so fantastic. Their energy together, you know, it, it, it brings it up to the next level. Um, but I'm really excited for my friends in other countries to see our show. Yeah. You know, they, they'd heard about the, the, first, the first iteration and now they get this version of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just think, you know, the same thing is that we have, we have the spirit and the essence of our old show. And then we've brought it up with so many different ways, in so many different ways. Mic drop. Could I have about four of these to go? <laughs> Fire! Oh, oh, oh. Coming in hot! Don't panic, but panic anyway. What do you guys think about, I mean, about like what's happened in Vegas? How, you know, we're on par now with all the fine cities in the world with the best chefs and all these great restaurants. I mean, we are coming to Vegas. I am personally coming to Vegas. You are? Soon. Wow. Oh. With a restaurant? This is breaking news. Maybe. Maybe. What? You got breaking news right there, girl. Listen, oh okay. It's going to be called Mings Mings. That's it, yeah. Because <laughs> that's a great name. I would call You're going to be the executive chef. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I get to finally work wow. for a show. Good. Do you have thank a location? Do you have a location? I, maybe. I sh yeah, maybe. Wow. Can you just give us a general time no. frame? <laughs> <laughs> but we'll all be there, right? To like for the opening I'll nights? Be I'll be there. Great. You know what's so incredible about Vegas is you have the best of the best. You know, chefs from all over the world come there and what used to be known for cheap buffets is now known as, you know, an incredible place to go and dine. And right. I think because so many chefs are in and out of that place, they bring great people with them and then that just continues to evolve. So yeah, it's a brilliant place to eat. There's more Michelin stars in Vegas now than Paris, if you can believe that. I mean, have you guys had a favorite Vegas moment or experience or favorite Vegas restaurant? I mean, I love Vegas. I feel actually some of the best food in, in Vegas is off the strip. If you go to like Chinatown or some of the Thai restaurants you have in Vegas, I feel all this, of course, very theatrical, big on the strip. Yeah. But I also love what's going on outside the strip. Vegas is incredible for food. I went to Lotus as I am, oh, and it's it. Yes. And I was like, wait a second, mm. wait a second. Off this wasn't, strip. this was not supposed to be this good. Nope. And it was outstanding. And I still crave it to this day. Still my favorite. It's Absolutely. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. What would be your oh, yeah. favorite? Do you have a favorite experience? Oh, goodness. All I remember is Cirque du Soleil and my wife taking me to these restaurants. Uh, we went to a couple of restaurants in one night, and then I'm not a big drinker. And I had a drink, and then I woke up the next morning. That's all I remember. <laughs> I think it was in the hangover. <laughs> there are so many stories about Vegas that are like, and I woke up. That's like only in Vegas. Can and there was a story. tiger in my room. There was Mike Tyson. I can't heard this story But before. I felt happy, so it was a good time in Vegas. And you'll have a good time watching Iron Chef Quest for an Iron Legend, streaming now on Netflix. Still ahead, magician Michael Carbonaro pulls a fast one on Rachel, and it's beyond captivating. Plus, he plays Elvis in Baz Luhrmann's new film. Sitting in the theater the first time going, I don't know how this is going to turn out. Austin Butler opens up about playing the king. I wish to promote you, Mr. Presley. Are you ready to fly? I'm ready. Ready to fly. Are you in the international? I no am on the way. Very You're on the stage. stage. Wow, that's very special. This is pretty surreal, actually. I'm here in Memphis. And you're at the International Hotel right now. I'm at Graceland, you're, you're at, you know, but it looks like Sun Studios. Uh, and you're over there. Wow, that's wow. great. That's so special. Well, we had to do something special for you because you give a phenomenally special performance. And I mean, Thanks. you've done Elvis proud, you've done Las Vegas proud, which loves the King so much. I mean, how are you taking this all in? Because the reaction's been incredibly overwhelming. I've been trying to take those those silent moments, you know, to just, just really appreciate where I am right now. Cause I just, I feel so grateful. I poured everything I had into it. And then, then you kind of, I'm sitting in the theater the first time <laughs> going, I don't know how this is gonna turn out. And I just am so proud of what everybody did in the film. and and so grateful for the way that it's being received, especially with his family. I just feel so happy. Not a lot of talk about the new Elvis. Are you, you're not on stage at the old International, are you? I sure am, just oh, for you. Yeah, and, it, and is Barry Manilow still playing there or something? He else? is, he is the oh, resident I've headliner. The I've seen the show. and. Barry was kind enough to take me backstage and show me the whole stage and so I could sort of map it in my mind. I mean, isn't it amazing how 
the, the legacy lives on, you know, here at the International, now the Westgate, but Las Vegas, we, it's so synonymous with Elvis. I crawled all over that theater because that theater is huge. I mean, when Elvis goes, you know, mighty big theater in the movie, I mean, it's a dead replica of that theater. And, you know, of course, Rachel, you know Vegas well. Back in the day, there weren't all these, like, uh, destination hotels. It yeah. was the first one, the International. Yeah, well, you did a great job recreating Vegas in the movie, so you obviously did your homework. <laughs> oh, yeah, I live my homework. Tomorrow, all of America will be talking about Elvis Presley. What do you think? I mean, Elvis really started these superstar headlining, mean, really made Las Vegas the entertainment capital of the world, where now we've got, you know, Lady Gaga, Bruno Mars, the biggest superstars. If he could see the evolution, what do you think he'd think? I think he'd be really proud of it to see that he was at the forefront of, of this legacy of, of incredible entertainers who are, are, are in Vegas. And, you know, people come from far and wide to, to go to Vegas uh, to see the, this, these great spectacles. And, um, I think he'd be very proud. I just gotta be making the most of this thing while I can. There is no doubt that you can draw, you can draw a direct line between, say, when Elton did Red Piano or these residencies and Elvis. He was the blueprint. I've never met anyone like you. I hope not. I had the chance to meet Priscilla Presley a few months ago when she came here and oh, did a wow. one-woman show, and she was oh, already wow. raving about the movie. Oh. What is it like to get her endorsement, and what does she say to you personally about your performance? I mean, you know, I it, it means the world to have somebody that was so close to him, you know, approve of, of not only the film, but also, I guess, of, of my performance as well. You know, she's been very, very complimentary. You know, we got to sit next to each other at Cannes, and, you know, by the end of it, we were, you know, holding hands and crying, and, yeah, it was it was a beautiful, beautiful full circle moment, and it's been an honor to have her around. You're looking for trouble? came to the right place. You dedicated, like you said, so many years of your life to inhabiting Helvis. Let me ask you, what piece of him will stick with you for years to come? There's, there's many things. Uh, the one that, that really sticks out to me is my relationship to fear. Mm. Because I felt more responsibility in what come than I'd ever felt in my life. And, and what comes with that is the terror that you're gonna fail everybody. You know, his, that, that I, I may let his family down or, or his fans down or, him down, and uh, so I, I was uh, nearly crippled with fear at times because I, I didn't feel like I was enough m at moments. The fact that Elvis felt those feelings, he was a shy kid, he, he felt stage fright all throughout his career, and yet he did such extraordinary things. And so the fact that he doesn't, you don't have to not feel the fear, it's its that you feel it, but then you go out there and, and you, you uh, you channel that in some way, and so that, that's a big thing he taught me. Whoever once told me that things are too dangerous to say, sing. Any surprising thing you learned about Elvis in making this movie that the world doesn't know? So much, so much, but above and beyond everything else, and I think by tracking down this childhood friend when he was living in the um, African-American community for a while, I learned about his profound connection to gospel. And gospel, I think, was his safe place. You know, Rachel, he would do two shows right yes. where you're standing. Right where you're standing. Right here. Yeah, but he'd go upstairs and sometimes with the sweet inspirations and he would sing gospel till the sun came up over the Nevada desert. So think about that. Like, that was his safe place, you know? Such a special movie, so we had to be in a special location. Rachel, good on you for going there. That's just awesome. I'm so impressed. Oh, thank you. I'm so impressed with you because everything you do is wonderful, and we just love this film so much. Thank you. It's a gift. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Elvis Presley. Still ahead, why exactly is Michael Carbonaro sneaking into Vegas's Penn and Teller Theater? Hear from the magician himself. But first, Ethan Hawke stretches some acting muscles in his new scary role. I'm finding this time period of my life really rewarding.
Hey there, I'm Drew. And I'm Alex. We're the Chainsmokers, and you're watching Lights, Camera, Vegas with Rachel Smith. Would you like to see a magic trick? Yeah. By the way, I have to make a confession because one of my very first ever movie crushes was Troy Dyer in Reality Bites, so see well, you. You've got good taste. I do. I actually do. <laughs> you know a winner. I mean, seeing you as the grabber, I was like, I was a little conflicted at first. <laughs> well, d don't worry. The, it, it, Troy still exists. The grabber is something else. Absolutely. But you know what? That made it so much fun because it's such a creative casting choice. I mean, was there any trepidation for you to take on this, this role, which is such an evil guy? Absolutely. You know, I, I first off, yeah. I don't like you know, imagining, just even imagining being somebody who locks kids in a basement is not something I want to do. Y yeah. You know, it, it doesn't sound like fun to me. And and second of all, I often feel like, I don't think I ever looked at Anthony Hopkins the same after Silence of Lambs. He could play the nicest grandpa in the world and I still wonder if he's gonna eat the kid, you, you know? Um, so, you, you know, you can't unsee what an actor shows you. But I really love Scott's work and I believe in my whole career, I've tried to make different kinds of movies. You, you know, I, I yes. pride myself on exploring different genres and entertaining people in different ways. Uh, sometimes you're in the mood for an art house movie that makes you think, and sometimes you wanna be swept away into romance, and sometimes yeah. you wanna laugh, and sometimes it's time for a midnight ghost story. Don't hang up. Who are you? You know all our names? It doesn't work. Hang it up. It's a coming of age drama disguised as a horror film. You know? Very Spielberg-esque, like when I was growing up, kind of had that little bit of that feeling. Very much, you know, because Close Encounters is scary, but it's, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, it's scary, but you know, Spielberg, Stephen King, uh, Scott's working in that kind of classic genre of, it's part Stand By Me, you know, part Goonies, part sinister, part Rosemary's Baby. You know, it's it's terrifying, but it's also, it's got a heart of gold. My brother, he was taken. By a man with black balloons. <laughs> I had a dream about it. Please let the dream be real. Besides being a horror film, what I like about this is it's such a story about siblings in love. Yes, yeah. that's like my favorite part too. You can, cause me, me and Mason tried to hang out as much as we could. And I think you can really see that bond in the movie. Yeah, and I feel like their relationship is definitely, you know, the heart of the film. This is definitely a boyhood story about, you know, growing up in these two siblings who love each other so much. So it's weird for me to see like, cute Ethan Hawke is the main guy. I mean, what do you guys, was it, was he making sure Mason when he had those mean scenes that, did he stay in character or did you guys kind of like have some playful moments in between? No, no, we definitely had some playful moments in between. <laughs> he, he he would just talk to me with the terrifying mask on, just having a conversation with me. He is, he's one of the nicest people I've ever met and even and such a great actor, you know, just being in the presence of him is such an honor, so. I made you some breakfast. What'd you put in that? Salt and pepper. <laughs> well, I just love, I mean, like you said, you have such a creative, career path and right now i mean you, you know from you know doing like marvel to this film to i think you're an animated batman you've got knives out coming out this is a really creative exciting time i mean your whole career has been like that but are you really satisfied where things are right now because it looks exciting to me <laughs> you know sometimes it takes a whole life to find the life that you wanted you know and i hmm. over the period of years, more and more, I've been able to be the kind of actor that I always wanted to be, um, which is just a working actor. I mean, I've always, you know, there's this whole pressure to, people like to create a business out of it, or, you know, who's a star and who's not a star, and I just love acting. I've always loved acting, and it, one of the things that's interesting about getting older is that you start to play more character parts and different things, and, and I find that I'm finding this, time period of my life really rewarding. Well, you know what? It shows. And it's such mm -hmm. a pleasure to watch you in all these roles. And uh, honestly, this is a very unique character for you, but it was such an enjoyable film, so I'm glad you took the part. Bye-bye. Take care of Vegas. Bye.
Next, magician Michael Carbonaro has some big shoes to fill this summer. See what he has planned for his Vegas residency. I'm Kim Kardashian. No, you're Michael Carbonaro. My new show will feature lots of alligator wrestling. His show may be called Lies on Stage, but Michael Carbonaro is telling the truth about taking over the Penn and Teller Theater. Okay, Teller, seven weeks down to Australia. Let's go. Congratulations. I Thank mean, you. you've had so much success on TV and on live shows and on tour, but I've known Penn Teller for almost 20 years. They would not let anybody perform on their theater and they haven't until you, so. Uh... Yeah, that is quite an honor. I, I They lost a bet. They lost that a is bet. quite the endorsement. And that's a lot of, that's some big shoes to fill. Four shoes actually. But <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, they both agreed on the kind of stuff I do, they both dug it. We became friends over the years and they just pop, they pop the question, so to speak. It's the first time in history the Vegas headliners have popped that question. They are trusting me to take over their theater this summer. That's right, I'm gonna have my very own Las Vegas residency. And turned over their Penn and Teller theater at the Rio to another performer. That was not in that box. Yeah, that's how they're packing them now. How'd they do that? There's illusionists, there's magicians. I mean, everybody from David Copperfield to Penn and Teller to you, you know, Matt Frank, everyone has their own brand. Everyone's different. Yeah. How would you describe yours and how does it differ? I went to, to school for at NYU and I'm like, do I want to be an actor? Do I want to be a comedian? Do I want to be a stand-up comic? I love magic. I love all of those things. And then doing the Carbonaro Effect TV show. Yeah. With, if you haven't seen it, it's a candid camera style show. So people are being pranked who don't know they're being pranked. So I'm like acting like all these different normal people in, in the real world. So I have to like use the improvisation, but I'm like making jokes to the viewer and, and I'm tricking these people. So I got to utilize all those skill sets. But at heart, you know, I love being on stage and performing as a magician on stage. I just, I, I light up. I'm a showman at heart. And you know, and I learned mostly maybe from watching David Copperfield as a kid he would just slip in and out of these worlds from being funny to goofy to playing with people then doing a big dramatic moment. And he was just your friend up there yeah. on the stage. And I, I love that. So I'm the host, I'm up there playing with people. I prank them, even though you know who I am, you will be fooled, you will be pranked. And it's not just the audience who is fooled. Michael was even able to prank me right in the middle of our interview. Was this from you guys directly or who gave me this? What? That was sweet. I thought you, I was like, I, I don't know. I've never gotten this kind of treatment on the road. I'm like, maybe because I have a residency, they sent that over. I thought it was cool. Wait a second. I don't even have a Beyond TV t-shirt. No, is stop. This, is this serious? a magic trick? I, no, I, no, I, I, you should have one though. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? You got, you have better PR people than you thought you did. I guess I'll get, so. I'll get good use out of that. Yeah. By the way, when, when this is, wait, <laughs> this is a magic trick. <laughs> what is, what? The shirt is now on you. I put. What? Okay, that is really weird. That is impressive. And no doubt you'll be beyond impressed when you see Michael's show at the Rio. Thanks so much for being with us for Lights Camera Vegas, where we always love to bring you the most cutting edge entertainment, pun intended. Until next time, guys, I'm Rachel Smith. Take care.